Hi guys and uh, welcome to a new video. Today I am going to be talking about my MacBook Pro 13 inch for development and which MacBook I would suggest that you guys are buying. Uh, that's a very, very common question so I will hope I can answer it at least a little bit. Basically I do have here the MacBook Pro 13 inch baseline model with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes, uh, not 16, 256 gigabytes. Uh, of SSD storage. So, so I'm using the baseline model right now. Uh, I do have another video in the pipeline where I'm gonna talking about my experiences, uh, but in particular with this uh, specific version, how the limitations are working out. Not so much the RAM, but uh, the SSD storage. I do have a couple of external drivers like uh, the Samsung T3 and the SanDisk Extreme Pro, uh, which you can plug in in the USB port and expand the uh, possibilities and storage options. I do have uh, the 13 inch baseline as I said, but let's be honest, um, you probably won't need the MacBook Pro. Uh, the MacBook Air seems to be sufficient. I made a test the other day where I tried to uh, max out this machine with running some Xcode benchmark. Um, and as you have seen in this video, the RPM of the internal fan, which the MacBook Pro is lacking, barely hits 2000 RPMs, which is pretty low. The temperature, it doesn't even get up close to 60 degrees Celsius, uh, where those Intel Macs, the previous versions, got close to 100, which was absolutely ridiculous. So probably you are a little bit more future-proof if you go with the MacBook Air, just because of the internal fan. But make no mistake, uh, the MacBook Air um, does lack the fan, but it will be sufficient for most of you guys. If you just uh, look up on the Apple's uh, website, right now uh, the MacBook Air, um, how much does it cost? It costs 999 US dollars. Uh, look up for original price in your country if you need it. But if you go with the MacBook Pro 13 inch baseline model as I did, um, I have to admit I got for this particular model a student discount for about 10% or so. But if you go with the MacBook Pro standard price, uh, just keep in mind that the US dollars that are $12.99, so there is a $300 price difference. With those $300, you can invest in a MacBook Air and get extended RAM to 16 gigabytes or 212 gigabytes, and you are still in a lower price than the 13 inch MacBook Pro. So guys, if you're on a budget, I would highly suggest to go with the MacBook Air. It does everything fine. So if you guys are on a budget, just go with the MacBook Air. It does everything pretty fine. I'm not sure if I would have missed the fan in this case. I never heard it in my test performance test with Xcode. You can watch the video, I'll link it. You don't even hear the fan. So uh, the fan is not a real reason to go with this. If you want to be a little bit more future proof, okay, I, I get it. I probably for myself will choose the MacBook Pro because I don't have to look at the budget that much and I just want to be using these machines for the next three, four years. I don't plan to upgrade every year or so. But if you are beginning to study, if you are just, just doing office or stuff like that, no, a no-brainer. If you're doing a light development, I would say, uh, web development in particular, absolutely no problem. If you plan to virtualize things like Ubuntu or I've seen that Windows the ARM version is uh, possible to virtualize, just go with the 16 gigs. But even though the MacBook Air should be fine as well. I do not have a, a real comparison because I'm not, I'm not that guy that orders uh, lots of machines free forward to, to compare them side by side. There are many, many other reviews out there. But I just want to let you know if you're planning on developing things, uh, front and uh, .NET, Java, the MacBook Air is fine. You don't see any difference, even in the benchmarks. I probably will somewhere in the frame put put a comparison chart uh, you don't see a difference i guess you have to run pretty extensive uh, cpu and gpu tasks on an extended period of time to probably see the the extra fan benefiting in the results but to be honest who does that if you are compiling code if it takes 30 seconds or 35 seconds it doesn't matter guys it doesn't matter that's my opinion uh, the very same applies to, to video exporting. If the machine takes one minute and with a fan 50 seconds, who cares? You are editing those videos, for example, a couple of hours and then you are making your decisions on buying stuff just because the export takes a couple of seconds less. Uh, that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, in my opinion, that's not a real world scenario and use case to just go on, on benchmarks 
um, see if a thing is slightly faster when the original or the original process takes so much longer. Um, it doesn't make sense if you're coding, for my my opinion as well, if you code uh, an eight hour or four hour period and then the compilation of the code is, is five seconds faster. What's the point? I, I don't get it, to be honest, guys. So there is not that much of a difference. So I would say just go for the MacBook Air. Of course, the MacBook Pro has a different form factor. It is flat. It's uh, over a little bit thinner, uh, but the MacBook Air has uh, a thinner front and a lightly or slightly thicker back, so it, it goes uh, not flat. It's a little bit shaped, but that's not not the reason to buy to buy stuff. I would also say if you're a developer, you probably want to plug in into an external monitor. I do have a 27-inch LG 4K display here, no problems at all. I don't need uh, two monitors, to be honest, but I understand if you guys want to use two. What you can do is um, use an iPad. That's fine as an external monitor. No surprise at all. I do have a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Uh, that's the first gen. 2018, I guess, was the release of this model here. Uh, it works totally fine. I've seen a couple of videos online where guys are using four, five, six monitors. So there is a way to, to get things done, to get things working. But for my workflow, it is absolutely fine. If you really do uh, need two monitors, I would suggest going for the Mac Mini. Of course, you're losing portability then, or just wait for the M1X or M2 models, which will come in the future. Let's wrap things up. I don't want to go into details to, to comparing those models, the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, with benchmarks, which really nobody cares about, to be honest. If you are like me, if you get things done, if you're using those machines to work, really, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It would matter if uh, the compilation time, let's say, would take one hour, uh, time frame and now it will take up one minute okay that will be a difference where i would say yes that's worth it but in this case it's it's so minor it's basically the same uh, just go for the macbook air if you really plan to use it longer uh, upgrade the ram first to 16 gigabytes you can always plug in an external uh, ssd drive for storage expansion surely you only get two ports keep that in mind not four only two so if you have the money just upgrade the RAM first and then the storage. If you don't care about the money or if you like just the MacBook Pro better, or let's say it has a Pro in the name and not an Air, just go with the MacBook Pro. But if you're going for the best performance, it doesn't make any difference. And just one final caveat, the baseline MacBook Air only, only, I would just say that with explanation marks, have seven CPU cores. Uh, if you really see a difference in real life usage, I'm not sure, uh, but if you go with uh, the first option or the first upgrade, you can also get the MacBook Air with uh, the eight core CPU. But keep in mind, four cores are high efficiency and four cores of those CPU, total eight cores are performance. All right, guys, I, I hope I could clarify some of your questions. I am aware of that, that this is not a comparison between the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, as I said in the beginning and multiple times throughout the video. But I just want to say, again, it's not a difference in performance between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro with the M1 chips. So just go with the MacBook Air if you're in a budget, if you like it, if you want to save some bucks, if you don't care about the bucks, if you have the money, why not go with the MacBook Pro? It's probably a little bit more future-proof but the MacBook Air is doing the job totally fine. All right, guys, if you do have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. As always, I will try to answer them as fast as possible. If you do have any future wishes for video, as I said in my previous video, I will just collect them, gather them together, and then just make a prioritized list and go through those videos. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's the first time that I'm talking just into the camera, nothing really testing or showing you, but I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.